Hi folks, welcome back. In this tutorial, I am going to explain the concept of polymorphism, the types of polymorphism with relevant examples in primarily Java and Python programming languages. By the end of the tutorial, you will also be able to understand the importance of polymorphism in software design and development. Let us see one example from everyday life. When we switch on a button which is connected to an electric bulb, the bulb gets eliminated. On button switch off, the power is disconnected. Instead of bulb, this button could have been wired to connect to any other appliance and yet it would operate in the same way. This behavior is called polymorphic behavior. Let me explain what I mean by that. Tell me, when this button was manufactured, did the producers know about what it is going to connect to? Obviously, they need not. Even the operating procedure for the button for all the appliance is same. However, the effect achieved on the connected objects is different for different types, right? Such a design is called polymorphic design. And the ability of an object to take on many forms is called polymorphism. Here, poly means many, morph means form. Now for this scenario, can you identify the entities, their properties and behavior? Let's take another example. On a calculator, we can operate on two integers or two floats or a combination. All of them using the same operator. As a programmer, we already know that result of the same operation varies based on the type of operands. For example, integer division of two integer results in an integer. Whereas, if any one parameter is decimal number, then the result is also a float or double. Now, from the end user's perspective, the interface and the procedure to calculate is same, thus depicting polymorphic behavior. Let us understand this in detail. Imagine that you are a programmer who has sold the library class called calculator to the calculator instrument manufacturer. The class calculator has variety of mathematical operations including divide. The divide method takes two int parameters. Now, based on the user input, when the caller program would want to pass different type of operands which are not limited to int, then the given method will not be sufficient to handle this situation. So what to do now? Should we create multiple method with different names? Wait a minute. Remember that the instrument manufacturing company has purchased the library class so that their programming becomes easy and not tedious, right? They don't want to memorize four different methods. They will expect that the call to the same method should take care of the background complexity. In such scenario, object-oriented programming language like Java allows the programmer to create various methods with same name provided they have different argument type or different number of arguments or their sequence. This is called method overloading. Important point to note here is that the mapping of caller method to the calling method is done at compile time itself. Hence, this type of polymorphism is known as compile time or static polymorphism. Now let us see a scenario where mapping cannot be done at compile time. Consider a juicer which has a behavior of making juice out of the given fruit. However, fruit is an abstract class. The concrete subclasses are say mango and apple. Let us write code for fruit and its subclasses. Note that the get juice behavior of fruit class is an abstract method which is overwritten and implemented by mango and apple. Next, let us code for the juicer class. Make juice method takes the object of fruit class. However, fruit being abstract class, the object that will actually get passed here will be any of its subclasses. Now, the most important thing to note here is that at the time of compilation of juicer class, there is no way for the compiler to know which subclass instance of fruit is going to be passed to the make juice. Let us put all the things together and write the caller class main method. When an object of mango is passed to the make juice method, the output window prints mango juice. Whereas when the object of apple is passed, it results in printing apple juice. The call to the fruit dot get juice will get mapped dynamically to the child object at runtime only. Hence, 
This is called runtime or dynamic polymorphism. Let us summarize. The polymorphism in Java can be classified under two main categories. Static polymorphism, also known as compile time polymorphism. This is achieved by way of overloading. And the dynamic polymorphism, also known as runtime polymorphism, is achieved through overriding methods. Method or function overloading is not allowed in Python since it is dynamically typed language. What it means is all the data types are same before mapping. Hence, interpreter cannot map it correctly. However, in Python, we frequently come across the overloaded plus operator. When it is used with numbers, it adds them. When it is used with string, it concatenates them. In programming, operator overloading, sometimes termed as operator ad hoc polymorphism, is a specific case of polymorphism where different operators have different implementations depending on their arguments. Operator overloading is generally defined by a programming language, a programmer, or both of them. For example, inbuilt overloaded plus operator is available in programming languages like Python, Java, JavaScript. Whereas in C++, we can create our own overloaded operator. Those who are coming from C programming background will agree that the usage of function pointer for say registering a callback function is a way to achieve polymorphism in C. Let's see. Assume that there is a library function provided in a platform system software. It performs some system level activity, for example, waiting for data from network at a port and the moment it receives data, it gives callback to the user defined function. The code for this library function accepts a function pointer. After the system level activity, a callback is given to thus registered function. Now from the main function, let us create function pointer pointing to the user defined function action one and then make a system call to the library function. Now, if we want to register any other function, say action two, then that can be done in a very similar way. The callback will be resolved at runtime. Thus the polymorphic behavior is achieved using function pointer. Now coming back to Python, the polymorphism can also be observed through something called as duck typing. Let us understand this interesting concept. Suppose there is a class called duck, which has three behaviors namely quack, walk and swim. A function act calls all three methods on the pass argument object. Now let us create object of duck and pass it to act function. This will execute and all three methods will be called. Now assume that there is a person participating in a fancy dress contest. The behavior depicted by this person is quack, walk and swim like a duck. Now when I create an object of person class from the main and pass it to the same function act, even then there won't be any error and execution will be smooth. This is possible because of duck typing. Interesting definition of duck typing in computer programming is about application of duck test. What it means is if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it must be a duck. This is to determine if an object can be used for a particular purpose. Note that there is no relationship between person and duck, yet they are perfectly replaceable without any error. This is possible in scripting languages like Python and JavaScript. Now let us discuss about why polymorphism is so important in design and development of a software. Polymorphism describes a pattern in object oriented programming in which classes have different functionality while sharing the same interface. The beauty of polymorphism is that the code working with different classes need not know which class it is using since they are all used in the same way. In programming world, polymorphism is used to make applications more modular and extensible. Loose coupling between the objects is possible since interchangeable objects can be used. Now just for fun, try this out. What do you think will the son bring in the given scenario? Number one, when mother asks him to bring red label. Number two, 
when father asked him to bring their table. Let us summarize our learning. We learned that polymorphism is an ability of an object to take on many forms. We discuss about static and dynamic polymorphism. We discuss about operator overloading. We discuss about how function pointers bring polymorphism in C programming. We talked about duck typing. We learned importance of polymorphism in software design and development. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments. You may subscribe the channel for future updates.